Since the early 1980s, pop culture has seen representation in the medium known as the fast food promotion. The most popular of these are the toys released in kids' meals at these fast food restaurants to commemorate the release or existence of a media franchise, such as McDonald's Happy Meal and competing products released at other fast food chains. Name me any pop culture or media franchise, and you can almost guarantee there is a fast food promotion of it in some way. These include Disney, Star Wars, Mickey Mouse, Pixar, Hot Wheels, Batman, Marvel, Looney Tunes, Transformers, Shrek, SpongeBob, Ghostbusters, Madagascar. You name it, it more than likely is there. As a significant part of popular media, video games would inevitably get their slice of the fast food promotion pie. A number of game franchises have had toys released to them in some way, but I'm going to be primarily focusing on Mario, Sonic and Pokemon while touching on numerous other games that have considerably fewer releases over the years. So without much further ado, this is the history of video game fast food promotions. The very first video game fast food promotion was released in 1982, and what better way to introduce video games to fast food than with Pac-Man? This promotion was released at Burger King to commemorate the release of Baby Pac-Man. This promotion has very little documentation on it, and all I could find was a few images of a meal box. I can't really say much more on it to be honest, so let's move on. Mario! Look Ronald, Mario's mystery block makes him big! And my magic box <laughs> makes us lunch! <laughs> As arguably the most recognisable video game character around, Nintendo's famous plumber would be one of the very first games to get his own fast food promotion. The first Mario themed fast food promotion was released in 1990, commonly misconceived to be the first video game fast food promotion. This would be a Mario set released in McDonald's Happy Meals. Available during August 1990 in North America, these toys were released to commemorate the release of Super Mario Bros. 3 for the NES. Released only in North America, this five toy set included a springy figure of Raccoon Mario, which would bounce up when it was pushed down, a pullback figure of Luigi sitting on a cloud, which would move around when pulled back and let go, a paratrooper toy which was capable of hopping, and a Goomba toy that would jump when it was pressed down. There was also a fifth toy released, a figure of Raccoon Mario that was designed for children under 3 and only available when requested and not normally included with a Happy Meal. The set was well promoted with a few commercials made for it with a pretty decently well animated Mario that was better than the cartoons that were being released at the time. However, this would be the only time Nintendo would partner up with McDonald's for another 16 years. In between this time, however, they did work with other fast food companies to release three Mario-themed promotions, being only released in the United States. In the holiday season of 1997, the height of the Nintendo 64 era, Nintendo would work with Taco Bell to run a sweepstakes contest, where you could win a Nintendo 64 console among other prizes. They would also release a set of toys themed to Nintendo 64 games. These included a maze toy themed to Mario Kart 64 that was produced in the shape of an N64 controller, a Super Mario 64 themed maze game, a Donkey Kong maze game made in the shape of Donkey Kong holding onto a barrel trying to climb up a tree, a Star Fox 64 shooting toy game, and a Yoshi figure given to children under 3. In 2002, Nintendo would work with burger chain Wendy's to release a set of Mario themed toys. These included a Mario action figure, a wind-up toy of Mario being chased by a chain chomp, Super Mario Advance, and Mario Kart Super Circuit themed board games, a finger operated Mario Kart game, and a pull back and go toy of Mario in his cart. Also in 2002, Nintendo would partner up with Burger King to release a set of 10 Nintendo toys in Burger King Kids Meals. The set included a Bowser and Peach spinning game, a Kirby themed spinning top toy, a Wario water game, a Link toy which would knock down targets, the enemies printed them being Deku Princess and two Deku Scrubs, a Kirby wind-up toy where you would suck little balls, a Diddy Kong launch toy where you would launch a little Diddy Kong figure onto a ramp, a Mario Sunshine themed toy that resembles a slot machine, a Donkey Kong toy, 
a Yoshi bobblehead wind-up toy which came with egg targets he had to knock down, and the Luigi's Mansion themed spinning toy. In 2006, Mario would return to McDonald's. The Take the Mario Challenge line was released exclusively in United States McDonald's in September 2006. These toys were sports themed active toys, produced presumably to help give McDonald's a healthier image after major controversies surrounding the fast food chain in the early 2000s. The toys in the set would include a Yoshi figure that plays Alpina Blue from Yoshi's story if it came into contact with another object, an inflatable hammer modelled after Mario's Iron Hammer move from Mario Power Tennis, a Donkey Kong Frisbee, a Donkey Kong spinning top launcher, a Mario ball inspired by his Mario Pinball Land design, and a Yoshi baseball toy. Like the Super Mario Bros. 3 line before it, this collection of toys would have their own commercial aired on television. Needless to say, it's pretty cringy. After this set ended its run, it would be the last time Nintendo would partner with McDonald's for a fair amount of time. In 2008, Nintendo would work with Burger King again to release a Wii themed set of toys. Like the previous Nintendo set, this set included 10 different toys. The set included a Luma, which would light up, a Mario Kart Wii themed Yoshi toy that included a launcher in the shape of a Wii wheel, a Donkey Kong toy which you would flip onto a target, a Chain Chomp toy that would come with a launcher in the shape of a Wii remote, a Peach wind up toy, a Mario launcher toy which would detach from its base when a button was pressed, a Metroid Prime themed maze game, a Boo toy that used magnets to give the illusion that it moved on its own, a Diddy Kong wind up launching toy, and finally a Super Paper Mario themed maze game. Burger King and Nintendo would partner up yet again in 2012 to release a set of 10 toys promoting the launch of the Wii U. These toys included several Wii U gamepad shaped toys including a disc shooter, sticker dispenser, ball catcher, clay moustache maker, semi-articulated Mario and Luigi figures, a Diddy Kong barrel of monkeys, Mario and Luigi cloud racing toys and finally a Donkey Kong barrel launcher toy. In the early 2010s, Nintendo would pursue an aggressive marketing strategy and start working with companies, obscure and large, to release promotional Nintendo and Mario products. These included Kellogg's, Vans, Land, and even Universal. Naturally, McDonald's was also on this list. There have been many sets of Mario toys released in the last six years, three of which being released in North America. One in 2014 made to promote the release of Mario Kart 8, and two different sets of generic Mario toys released in 2017 and 2018, promote the Mario brand. These were released in North America and Australia, and a select few of these toys were also released in the UK and other markets. The Mario Kart 8 wave included miniature toys of Mario, Toad and Donkey Kong in the standard cart, toys of Yoshi and Peach on the standard bike, Bowser and Luigi in the Mac 8, and a visor in the shape of Mario's hat with the Mario Kart 8 logo molded on. The Mario toys released in April 2017 included a Mario figure, a Yoshi toy that would extend its tongue with a press of the button, a Bowser toy which would launch a fire projectile, a Peach toy that would spin around as the toy moved, a Luigi toy that would launch from a yellow warp pipe, a one-up mushroom that makes the iconic sound with a flick of a switch, a red shell, and an invincible Mario that would light up in a number of colours. The 2018 set included a little pinball set modeled after World 1-1 from Super Mario Bros. A Mario puzzle cube, a Fire Luigi figure that fires a little fireball disc at targets, a Yoshi launcher, a Mario figure that throws Cappy from Super Mario Odyssey, a Yoshi bingo game, a Mario figure that also resembles a slot machine, and a maze game that has New Super Mario Bros. U artwork printed on it. To my knowledge, this set was not released in Australia. A European specific set of toys was released in 2014, 2015 and 2017, which were exclusive to the region. There were also a set of toys released in Hong Kong, South Korea and presumably other Asian markets in 2014 and 2019. This set is poorly documented and to all my international viewers, I apologise if I got anything wrong or missed anything. The 2014 wave of toys released in Asia included Boomerang Mario, a pullback Yoshi, a Peach toy very similar to what was released in America, Fire Mario, Penguin Mario, a Mario toy that would spring out of a warp pipe, a toy of Mario on a flagpole and a toy of Mario hitting an item box. 
Strangely, these toys were extremely popular in Korea and reportedly sold out quickly. From collecting over the years, I own a few of these in my personal collection. Where do the stars of Sega Sonic 3 go when the game's over? Sonic? Are you guys in there? Sonic would become another video game character to have a fast food toy made of himself not long after Mario did. Sonic would get the fast food promotion treatment in 1994. Made to commemorate the release of Sonic 3, this set was released at McDonald's in the United States in February 1994. The set included a launching figure of Sonic sculpted onto lava to represent Lava Reef Zone, despite the zone appearing in Sonic and Knuckles. A spinning toy of Knuckles sculpted onto a cloud, where the Knuckles figure would spin around as the cloud was pushed along. A flying toy of Tails, which would detach a flying disc when a string was pulled. And a wind-up Eggman toy in his Eggomatic, mauled after his appearance in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. There was also a ball with a Sonic design in it that was given to children under 3, similar to that of the Super Mario Bros. 3 promotion. This promotion would be held in combination with a sweepstakes competition where up to 10,000 participants could win a free copy of Sonic 3. In the final week of the promotion, the Tails toy was recalled, as it reportedly caused injury to children as a result of them using the toy inappropriately. These were the first video game fast food toys to be released internationally, getting released in Canada in late 1994, the UK in February 1995, Germany and Belgium in March 1995, and finally June for Japan and, inexplicably, New Zealand. The international release of the toys would receive variations. The Tails toy in these releases would be completely different from the American release. The Tails toy would lose its ability to fly, staying connected to a spinning top modeled after Marble Garden Zone, and be powered by a Beyblade style ripcord that would make its tail spin. The Canadian release of the set would have a unique Tails variant of a Sonic Ball, and the Japanese release would omit the Tails toy altogether. Perhaps the most interesting variation of the set happened when the toys were localized for the Japanese market. For whatever reason, the Eggman's toy design was changed, with his appearance updated to resemble how he appeared in the games, rather than the cartoon. I personally own the European release of this set. It was one of the first things I bought for my collection when I started taking Sonic collecting a bit more seriously. Also in 1994, McDonald's would release a promotional set of toys to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Happy Meal. This set of 15 toys from different companies McDonald's had worked with in the past, when connected, would form a train. Fresh off its partnership with Sega, a Sonic-themed toy would be included in this set. This toy would be made in the shape of a TV with a Mega Drive modelled on top of it. When the wheels of the toy would roll, the TV picture switches between a picture of Sonic, Tails and Eggman. In the UK, two sets of toys would be released at Burger King in the 90s. The first predated the release of McDonald's own set and would be the first Sonic fast food promotion, being released in 1993. This set of four toys would include a Sonic Ripcord launcher, his odd looking Tails disc launcher, similar in function to the McDonald's version, that was also recalled, an Eggman spinning top, and a Sonic spinning toy modeled off the capsule from the classic games. The second would be released in 1998 to promote the release of Sonic R on the PC. The set included a little game in the shape of Sonic's face. Sonic and Eggman figures you whack into each other, a pull back and go Tails toy, a wind up Knuckles toy, and an Eggman water toy. In 1999, Sega would work with Jack in the Box to release a set of four toys based on its properties. This Sonic and this weird looking Knuckles were part of the set, but there was also Echo the Dolphin and Bug. The next partnership Sega would make wouldn't be until 2003 and this would be quite perhaps the most iconic and recognisable video game fast food promotion. In May 2003, McDonald's, Sega and Fisher-Price would partner up to produce a set of Sonic and Sega themed LCD games that would be given away in Happy Meals. This set of six games would be released in most of McDonald's international markets and included LCD games of Knuckles, Tails, Shadow, Eye Eye and two of Sonic. Their likenesses moulded onto the games, and the Sega logo moulded under the screen. I personally have the Knuckles and Shadow games from this set that I have acquired over the years. They are pretty simple LCD games that are pretty cool for McDonald's toys given away in kids meals, but the games themselves are very simple, and don't really have much to them. I guess that makes sense though. Supposedly these toys were very successful, off the back of a major advertising campaign, and a global release. Successful enough to order a second wave of toys the following year. 
This set of Sonic LCD games were produced to commemorate the release of Sonic Heroes in 2004. These toys would have artwork of most of the playable characters from Heroes printed onto the games, and the set would feature a far, far bigger lineup of characters. These included toys of Amy and Rouge, Big, Cream, Knuckles, Shadow, Omega, Sonic, Tails, and interestingly, Billy Hatcher. All of these toys, with the exception of Billy Hatcher obviously, would have their heroes' likenesses printed onto the game rather than moulded on like the originals were. Like the previous set, these toys would be released in most of the McDonald's international markets. When the set was released overseas, the toys would get variants as the Sonic, Shadow, Knuckles and Tails games were changed. Commercials were aired all over the world in many of McDonald's major markets, but this promotion was known for spawning this now infamous Pakistani commercial made to promote the set's release in the country. Sonic Skateboard Rogue and Emmy Dennis Sega Game Slime! The latest time Sega teamed up with McDonald's would be in 2006 and 2007, when toys were produced to promote Sonic X despite the show having already ended its original run when the toys were released. Three different sets were produced for different European markets. The UK and Australia received Sonic X disc launches in the shape of the character's likenesses, with Sonic X artwork of the characters printed onto the launches and discs. The toys released in the set included Sonic Tails, Knuckles and Shadow. However, the Shadow launcher was never released in Australia. In France, Fighting Top toys of Sonic, Shadow, a pencil case and these two things were released in 2006. In other European countries, another set of toys were released in 2007, which included a Sonic flying disc, a spinning toy, a wind-up wheel, and a ball launcher which included a little Sonic figure inside the ball. For unknown reasons, none of the Sonic X toy sets were ever released in North America. However, this is probably because, as mentioned before when these toys were released, Sonic X had already well and truly finished its run. Since then, Sega hasn't really partnered much with fast food companies. From what I could gather, only smaller restaurants in specific nations have partnered with Sega for fast food promotions. These include Flunch in France, Red Rooster in Australia, Carl's Jr. in Arby's in the United States, and more recently, Subway, only in North America, and Jack in the Box for the recent movie. Before I finish off the Sonic part of the video, I'd like to discuss one final promotion that was never made. A few years ago, a 1998 document was put up for auction on eBay, which for the first time revealed plans and concepts for a partnership with Burger King to make Sonic Adventure toys in time for the release of the Dreamcast in North America. The toys included Amy, Gamma, Big, Sonic, Tails in the Tornado 2, Knuckles, another Sonic you could attach to the Tails toy, another Tails, another Knuckles, and an Eggman. These toys would be modelled after their Sonic Adventure likenesses. However, as clearly seen by the photos, these designs were likely produced before artwork for Adventure was finalised for the game's Western release. As seen by the rather fat and stubby looking Sonic and Tails, that we wouldn't really associate with the modern designs of the characters today. For unknown reasons, however, the plans to release these toys fell through, and as such were never produced. What you see here is all that exists of this planned set. A number of obscure concepts presented in this document, such as the Tornado 2 or E102 Gamma, never really ended up getting too much merchandise produced of them, even in the height of Adventure's relevance. Gamma got like what? One action figure? And one plush? As to why these toys weren't produced, that still remains a mystery. Nonetheless, it is still interesting to see this footnote in Sonic merchandise history. Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Kangaskhan, Golem, Kabuto, Meow, Poliwag, Poliwag. You kids are from around here. For our third game series, we're going to be looking at Pokemon. And boy oh boy, this franchise has an extensive history in fast food. 
In fact, it was Pokemon that was responsible for the single largest fast food video game themed promotion of all time. At the height of Pokemon's early popularity, and to promote the US release of Pokemon the first movie, a large collection of Pokemon themed toys were released at Burger King Kids Meals in November and December of 1999. Some 59 toys were released as part of this $22 million promotion. The toys representing various Gen 1 and Gen 2 Pokemon. They were all paired with unique cards. This would be among one of the largest fast food promotions in history. The set included Bulbasaur, Lapras, Rhyhorn, Slowpoke, Venusaur, Arcanine, Rapidash, Tauros, Malnidoran, Charmander, Gengar, Mew, Mewtwo, Raichu, Cubone, Dragonite, Electabuzz, Geodude, Hitmonlee, Kangaskhan, Muck, Nidoking, Nidoqueen, Nidorino, Sandshrew, Sandslash, Fileplume, Butterfree, Golbat, Gyarados, Meowth, Oddish, Poliwhirl, Snorlax, Togepi, Chansey, Clefairy, Diglett, Ditto, Golem, Graveler, Coughing, Magnemite, Tangela, Venonat, Voltorb, Jigglypuff, Blastoise, Kabuto, Poliwag, Poliwrath, Psyduck, Seedra, Shoulder, Squirtle, Tentacruel, and three different talking variants of Pikachu. Boy, that was a mouthful. These toys were reportedly extremely popular, and many Burger King restaurants claimed to run out of toys at some stage during the promotion. Because of this promotion's unexpectedly high popularity, Burger King would eventually offer trading nights at its restaurants, where kids could come to Burger King restaurants to trade their toys and eat food. The set also stirred controversy, relating to the Pokeball containers the toys were given away in. Design flaws of the Pokeballs meant they were a major suffocation hazard, Following multiple incidents at the end of 1999 involving small children suffocating after having half of their container stuck on their mouth, including two fatal incidences, the Pokeballs were recalled by Burger King and the US Product Safety Commission. It is estimated that around 500,000 containers were returned to Burger King out of over 25 million that were given away. Given the eBay listings for the toys from this set often come without the Pokeballs, I tend to think most parents just probably straight up threw out the balls rather than returning them to Burger King. As a result of this recall, many modern Pokeball toys now have air holes designed into them. Burger King would have another Pokemon promotion in July 2000 to promote Pokemon 2000. However, this involved power cards rather than physical toys, and the promotion wouldn't even come close to the scale of the previous one. Two years later, Pokemon would make its debut at McDonald's. It would soon become a frequent sight in Happy Meals, with sets being released every year after that until 2006. Because Pokemon is so commonplace in fast food promotions, I'm going to go through them in brief detail compared to what I did previously. But seriously, a whole separate video could be dedicated to just these promotions, because they are so many of them, and I'm not really knowledgeable enough in Pokemon as I am on Mario and Sonic to make it just yet. Since then, Pokemon has joined the ranks of Hot Wheels, Barbie and DreamWorks to be a frequent partner with McDonald's. From 2011 to 2018, there was a Pokemon promotion at McDonald's every year. 2011 set was made to promote Black and White, as was 2012 set. 2013 set was a French exclusive, not tied to any particular game. 2014 set was made to promote X and Y. 2015 to promote Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. 2016 set was released in Europe and China, not tied to any particular game. 2017 set to promote Sun and Moon, and finally 2018 set featuring various legendaries. These sets were all released in America, Australia and Europe, except for the 2013 and 2016 set, which did not see a North American or Australian release. These toys were paired with exclusive Pokemon cards that were only released at McDonald's. These sets contained different Pokemon of the era or from the game they were meant to represent. For example, the 2011 set, which represented Gen 5, included toys of Pikachu, Reshiram, Oshawa, Zorark, T-Pig, Zekrom, Snivy, and Zora. Pikachu being the mascot of the franchise was seen in basically every Pokemon set at McDonald's. The most recent Pokemon fast food promotion was released at Burger King and Hungry Jacks in Australia. In 2019, 
a set made to promote Detective Pikachu, the toys being based on their movie likenesses. And I'll finish up with a few minor franchises that also got fast food toys made of them. Did you know Crash Bandicoot has fast food toys made of him? In 2004, his own line of LCD games were released in McDonald's, similar to the previous two waves of Sonic LCD games, made to promote the release of Crash Twin Sanity. The set included four Crash LCD games, as well as Coco and Neo Cortex games. This line was a European exclusive and has very little information on it. A second Crash LCD game set was released in 2005 for Europe and North America, now including his fellow PlayStation partner Spyro as part of the promotion. A set of 8 games were made in the shape of little books, with lids covering the screens. This would be the last fast food appearance of both characters, though Skylanders was a common sight at McDonald's in the 2010s, but I don't really count that as Spyro so we'll ignore that. Fast food companies even released mini consoles. Burger King released mini Game Boy Colors in 2000 which are now being modified into mini Game Boy Colors capable of playing actual Game Boy games. Pretty cool. Or how about Mega Man, which got a single set of four toys released in McDonald's in 2005, consisting of Mega Man, Proto Man, Bass, and Guts Man, which released in Brazil, Japan, and Thailand, among other countries, to promote the Mega Man NT Warrior anime. Going back to Pac-Man, Another set of toys were made to promote the release of the Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures cartoon, released in American Burger King outlets in 2014. Even the LEGO games got their own set of toys. The LEGO Batman game got its own line of toys made for McDonald's in 2008. Rabbids anyone? <sighs> nah, let's pretend I never said that. Remember Viva Pinata, that rare game that nobody talks about? Yeah, that got a promotion at Burger King too or Connectimals, the Kinect's quote-unquote killer app that was a lame-ass rip-off from Nintendogs. Yep, you can get that one too. And yes, Microsoft actually paid money for this. You thought Overwatch wasn't kid-friendly enough for fast food promotions? Wrong. What if I told you Jack in the Box sponsored an entire team in the games of esports scene the Dallas Fuel? Okay, I'm grasping at straws here. And that's all I've got. There's probably heaps of others I missed, but there is way too many toys for anyone to remember from this entire video. So we'll move on. Now you're thinking at this point of the video, how can I get these toys today? Because what I covered in here is all released in the past. You can't get them from physical McDonald's, Burger King, Hungry Jack's, KFC, or whatever fast food restaurant today. You can't just walk in and ask for the toys now. Many of these fast food promotional toys, particularly the more recently released sets, are a common sight on places like eBay, or in garage sales, or on Gumtree, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, what have you. The McDonald's Mario 2017 set, for example, I actually collected the majority of these toys through the secondary market. In car boot sales, garage sales, and other places people look to get rid of their old stuff. For the older 90s and early 2000s sets, because of these toys age and the fact that many of these fast food toys are typically thrown out or sold on after a year or so, make the toys, especially the early ones, decently uncommon on eBay. The early McDonald's Mario and Sonic promotions, as well as the Pokemon Burger King 1999 promotion, aren't really as expensive as compared to their respective merchandise of the era. But that being said, they aren't cheap. Because these sets, the Sonic 3 toys specifically, were released in multiple countries, they are more common. But in 2020, it is safe to assume much of these toys are now either in the hands of collectors or were trashed a very long time ago. And then there are the more obscure toys. The Mario Wendy's and Nintendo Taco Bell toys, Sonic Jack in the Box and UK Burger King toys, among others, are actually quite hard to obtain due to a combination of the toys being old and being released in chains that have a comparably limited presence compared to McDonald's and other ones with a global presence like Burger King. Some toys like the Japanese exclusive variant of the McDonald's Sonic 3 promotion are highly sought after by collectors and fetch high prices. Some unique things like store displays which are used in the restaurants to promote these promotions they also appear from time to time on the secondary market. These displays are considered to be in the holy grail realm for collectors and are rarely on the secondary market. 
if ever at all. And I doubt you're going to get one cheap either. So that's it. This is the mostly complete history of video game fast food promotions. As you can see, many video game franchises, obscure and famous, were immortalized into meal toys given away in kids meals that are sadly really only used once and sit in the box until they are given away, sold or thrown out. Despite some of these toys capturing obscure characters and represent bygone eras of video game franchises, I don't think you'll see another toy of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Eggman, that's for sure. And yet the history, the design, and sometimes the general strange nature of these toys. The history of some of these toys that span across many franchises are really compelling. It's no wonder why video game merchandise collectors around the world like adding these little cheap plastic toys to their collection. I sure do. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you're new to this channel and missed out on the last video, check out the previous video here. If you like my content and want to see more, like, comment and press the subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. I also have a Twitter and Twitch channel. If you'd like to check them out, the links to them are in the description.